Now, it's one of the most high-pressure specialist jobs around, and now it's the subject of a new Virgin Media show, Brain Doctors Inside Neurosurgery. Joining us now are two of Ireland's leading neurosurgeons, Professor Kieran Boulder and Catherine Moran. But first, let's take a look at their work in the show. There's an urgent case on the way. An English tourist is being rushed to Beaumont in critical condition after falling down a flight of stairs. I had a few dreams last night. Uh, fell down 12 stairs. The severity of his injury is immediately clear. He hit his head off a vase. Yeah. That's, that's what's in his brain. That's what's in his brain, so okay. I don't know if it's clear or if it's not. Until surgery begins, the team won't know how much glass is lodged in the man's brain. But as foreign objects go, Catherine's seen worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surgeries with foreign objects in the brain, yeah, we see them. Trauma usually. Sometimes it's an assault and it's a knife that's in there. You know, I've also taken a fence out of somebody's brain. That's the oddest, yeah, vase and a fence. OK, I think we know where we're going to start this okay. interview with Catherine. A vase and a... F and a f you've taken a fence out of someone's brain. Yes, yes. What, is that just another day at the office? Yeah, someone it, falls? Mm -hmm. You see everything, because we're covering, you know, four million people. Uh, every day, so we get a lot of different types of uh, traumas, brain hemorrhages, but whatever comes in the door, we just have to, we just deal with it. It's absolutely incredible what you must go through on a daily basis. You're the first ever Irish neurosurgeon, something I know you're very proud of as well. How did you get into this line of work? Um, well, I, you know, it was when, when I was in college, it was always the brain that kind of fascinated me most. So I thought to kind of pursue it and I, I never really left. Um, you know, when I was a, I had a head injury, a minor head injury, but I was in hospital as a teenager. And I remember looking at the doctors putting in lines and I wanted to learn how to do it. Um, so I kind of got, yeah, I thought they were rock stars. So well, putting in lines is one thing and then going, I'm going to crack people's brains yeah, open is something else, isn't yeah. it? Because yeah. both of you, you're both neurosurgeons, you're Ireland's first female. Mm -hmm. But Kieran, what was it for you that went, first of all, medical field and then next thing, I'm specialising in neurosurgery? Well, I don't know where I got it from. I, I always wanted to be a doctor. When I was a kid, I yeah. wanted to be a doctor. And uh, then once I got into medical school, I got interested in the brain. I did a degree in brain science, neuroscience. And sort of when I went into the hospitals, then I really liked surgery. So kind of the two went together, you know. So. Uh, again, though, do a lot of people get caught up on the fact that it's the brain <laughs> that you're dealing with? I think, you know, we're open to it on medical TV shows. You know, as I was mentioning to you, it's Dr. McDreamy and Grey's Anatomy and it's always cracking the brain open. And it's a very intricate, specialised speciality. Well, I suppose because the brain is you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You can take out your liver and you're going to be the same person afterwards. You can put in somebody else's liver or kidney or whatever, yeah. but you can't really do that with the brain. And so things that affect the brain affect you as a person mm. um, rather than just a, a medical thing. So I think that's why people are fascinated by it. Uh, the two of you are a relationship together. Is it high, is it, whenever you're in such a high pressured environment, is it nice to have somebody like Kieran to be able to come home who kind of knows what you're going yeah, through exactly. on a daily yeah, basis? It's really, it's really helpful and really nice in the evening when you can come home and kind of unload everything and someone knows what you're talking about. Is it, would it be hard for somebody who wouldn't be used to that? I think so, a think? little, yeah. Because you sometimes we do come home and talk about cases and what happened during mm. the day and it's it's nice even just you talking there you know like a, a, a knife in the brain this sort of stuff that everyone else would be going what but i mean this is your day to day yeah, job it's, it's every day yes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can also come home and get criticised for what you did during the day as well. It's not, you know, <laughs> the reality is on that. I wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that happen? What oh, yeah, sometimes thinking? we disagree. Yeah. So it's supportive, but sometimes it's a bit critical. Yeah. And well. during your time being a neurosurgeon, Kieran, how have the advancements been in science and in relation to what it is that you can do? Oh, the advancements have been pretty dramatic since I started. I mean, mostly in terms of uh, two big areas would be implants that we can put into people, particularly for spine surgery, which didn't exist when I started. And now we've a lot of stuff we can do. Yeah. Um, the role of computers. So we use computers a lot now. So we've navigation systems that help us find our way around the brain. None of that was there when I started. So, And now more recently, we've started to use robots. So... Mm -hmm. Is it con continuously upscaling yourself? Yeah, definitely. As well? Yeah, it's a main part of our like what we do is to keep in keep up to date with mm. all the tech. 
Um, so it must I be do, very exciting. Yeah, so I do deep brain stimulation surgery as well, which is implanting electrodes or small little wires to program uh, networks in the brain for patients with Parkinson's disease. And that's kind of a new service that we've started in Beaumont. And it's that's really tech heavy. So you really need to be up to date on the tech. Do they have to be awake during that? No, no, they're asleep. Right, okay. Sometimes they're, not, they're awake. Sometimes they're awake as you have to do tests. Yes. Um, it is so fascinating. Do you have do you have siblings? Yes. That's a bit annoying, is it, for them? Just being like, yeah, the neurosurgeon, <laughs> the literal, neuro, I'm never going to win at Christmas. She's just you know implanting I mean? a yeah. chip. Is it, is it like that for both of no, you? That's no. That's my siblings just think I'm a nut, like a space cadet. Oh, do cadet. they? Like, yeah, it doesn't well, matter. But when you everyone know? says, sure, it's not Keep brain it surgery, not brain you're like, it literally is. Yeah. 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 That's kind of <laughs> nice to throw back what, in people's face. What made you want to let the cameras in and look behind the curtain? Because it is a high-pressure job. You have an awful lot going on. You have people's lives you know, on your, in your fingertips at this stage. So for to cameras to come in, did you feel an extra pressure? Or there's obviously a reason that you felt this is something I'd like to show well, you, you got We got used to them. They, they're around quite a lot, so after a while you just get used to them. But I think the main reason we wanted to do it was that it is such a mystery for people what happens in Beaumont. Beaumont has a kind of... I don't mean a bad reputation, but a stressful reputation. You hear somebody's scary. going to Beaumont, it's mm, a scary yeah. place. Yeah. You know they're not doing well. Um, and I, I was interested in doing it just to let people see what we actually do and that we're just people and we're... And to encourage things. more people to get yeah. into it. Yeah. Do we need to see more people in Ireland? We need about twice as many neurosurgeons as we yeah. have. Yeah, part of it is also, you know, we have a big team. There's, you know, 10 consultants and about 30 um, trainee yeah. surgeons yeah. in various kind of uh, roles. Um, and we kind of wanted to showcase it and show what we do because we're... We're always under a lot of pressure for, for beds and resources and we, we, we give a really good service, but we wanted to show that, you know, we really need more to give it to more people who need it. Okay. And, and that's what I find fascinating about these programmes because we've seen it in the UK for quite a few years. We've been getting to see what's happening within the NHS and you're letting us see what's happening mm -hmm. in the hospital because it is, you're highly specialised. Your catchment area is four million people mm -hmm. and it can be people who are si sick, illness, spinal surgeries, Parkinson's, have you said, but then a lot of people intoxicated. Like mm -hmm. a lot of accidents happen that way. So are we going to see those stresses of what's going on with the service, with the HSE and, and, and with how many people we have working within it? I don't think we're going to see too much, too much on the show, bit, yeah. but, you know, hopefully they'll see the, you know, the really good side of the work we do. But it, there's a lot of behind the scenes where we have to fight for resources, fight for resources. and we spend a lot of our time actually doing that on a day to day basis. In terms of uh, work life balance, is there a work life balance in this line of work here? Oh, yeah, I think so. So we, you know, we do, we don't, we're not neurosurgeons 24 hours a day. <laughs> but are you able to switch off whenever you're in, yeah. you know, you're involved in a really high pressure situation? Yeah, I think you have to be able to switch off. You'd go mad if you, if you couldn't switch off. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's the other things like I sing in a band or paint, <laughs> you know, there's... Why did your stresses. wife laugh so hard there when you talk about singing in a band? <laughs> singing in a band. <laughs> is there, being neurosurgeons, is it, we're all getting, there's so much about the brain that we don't know, mm -hmm. you know, this unexplored part. And, and people are kind of like talking about their brain health so much more about, you know, longevity and preventing certain illnesses. Is there anything that you could tell us about that that would be good for us? We, yeah, I guess we don't, we don't know why you get dementia. We don't know the causes of it. Yeah. Um, and everyone wants to, you know, if your brain goes, that's the saddest thing to happen. Um, so I guess learning a new language, Duolingo, always yeah. a good idea. So, <laughs> so the, the best evidence we have is to keep your brain active. Yeah. Okay. Keep learning. Keep doing new keep things. Learning. Keep learning. And is concussion a worry? Concussion is a worry. Mm -hmm. Um, we see quite a few people with concussion. Yeah. Um, and it can take people a long time to get over concussion. And cumulative concussions are, are a problem, mm. um, particularly in the sporting world. Yeah. Um, yeah. With young so, kids as well playing sports. Well, it's a worry, yeah. Um, oh, well, listen, Duolingo is the way forward then. I've <laughs> got 57 <laughs> other things I want to tell you. Duolingo, okay, we can okay, all do we Duolingo. We can all go learn something, maybe One go thing. sing in a band. That's yeah. something you can do Catherine as well. Catherine will come and laugh at you. Um, <laughs> listen, exactly. it, it is a new show. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Tonight, it's Brain Doctors Inside Neurosurgery. It's on at 9 o'clock on Virgin Media 1. You can check it out on Virgin Media Play as well. Um, Kieran Bulger and Catherine Moran, thank you so much thank for you. coming and talking. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for letting the cameras in. Really good.